Hi there, and thank you for logging on to the Pilot Aware video channel. As you may know, Pilot Aware produces electronic conspicuity devices that are not only inexpensive, but also can see more traffic than any other single device available today. As well as being able to directly detect other types of electronic devices, we also use a network of ground stations to rebroadcast aircraft positions that cannot be seen directly by Pilot Aware units. In addition, we use the ground network to provide as much interoperability between systems as possible and also to improve obscuration. This video describes how we do this and the performance you can get from your Pilot Aware unit. The network that we use is called the Pilot Aware Atom Grid. The following slides describe what EC devices are used in Europe and the approximate volumes of each used by GA aircraft in the UK. They will also show why there are different systems and why one single unit will not meet all stakeholder requirements. What the Atom Grid looks like and how it works will also be described and why you should consider installing an Atom Grid ground station at your flying club to improve local aviation safety. The chart on the right shows the types of UK electronic conspicuity in use in 2020. The data used has been collected from various sources, including Airspace for All, from manufacturer's data, and the collection of data from the 749 individual aircraft that attended the Light Aircraft Association Rally in 2019. This, we believe, is the best data available today. So that the power of pilot to air atom grid network can be understood, it's important to have a basic understanding of the various types of electronic conspicuity in use. The most popular in the UK is the ubiquitous Mode Charlie or Mode Sierra transponder. These are the standard air to ground systems used to give air traffic controllers a better understanding of an aircraft's position when it's in controlled airspace and also as a generic target when it's outside. Mode Sierra and Mode Charlie rely on expensive secondary surveillance radar to interrogate them to initiate a transmission, as they do not do this automatically. Mode Sierra and Mode Charlie transponders also don't see each other directly, so they cannot be regarded as air-to-air -air electronic conspicuity devices really at all. However, as you'll see later, the Atom Grid overcomes this problem for Mode Sierra transponders. The next popular types of electronic conspicuity are Pilot Aware and FLAM. Both products use Spectrum in the regulated but unlicensed ISM band that is available in Europe. This means that the levels of what they can transmit is very regulated, but there is no associated licensing cost. This has the advantage of stimulating innovation and functionality not possible with regulated systems can be provided. Both Pilot Aware and FLAM systems contain an onboard GPS so their location can be accurately determined in both time and space. FLAM uses a closed encrypted air to air data link and provides predictive algorithms that inform the pilot of an immediate collision with another aircraft that is equipped with FLAM. FLAM is also transmitted by OGN trackers and FanNet Plus devices and FLAM is the most popular device used by gliders in Europe today. Pilot Aware, on the other hand, uses an open and unencrypted air-to-air -air and air-to-ground data link that provides additional data as well as electronic conspicuity in both directions. ADSB is a modern extension to Mode Sierra, which automatically transmits the aircraft's location via GPS coordinates just like Pilot Aware and FLAM. For ADSB to work, no secondary surveillance radar is required, and some Mode S transponders such as Trig, Funk, and Dynan can be very cheaply converted to ADSB in and out by connecting a cable from Pilot Aware to provide the GPS input. Finally, there are low powered, low weight carry on devices that transmit ADSB in and ADSB out. These are designed to meet the CAA CAP 1391 specification for use in the UK only. 
Like Pilot Aware and Flam, CAP 1391 devices do not have a transponder function. All of the above transmissions will be seen when using Pilot Aware linked to the Atom Grid network. Let's now have a look at how the combination of Pilot Aware and the Atom Grid network will provide the best interoperability between systems available today. Here are the aircraft that Pilot Aware will detect directly with no ground station involvement. Firstly, Pilot Aware will see all Pilot Aware equipped aircraft and they will see you. This will be as a target with a GPS location, just like any modern system. Secondly, Pilot Aware will see all aircraft transmitting ADSB out. This will also be as a target with a GPS location that can be plotted on a screen or flight bag. The ADSB equipped aircraft will not detect you. Thirdly, Pilot Aware will detect all Mode C and Mode S equipped aircraft. The information received will not include GPS coordinates as none are transmitted, but it will provide height and a relative distance based on the rate of change of the signal power received. This will then be shown as a bearingless target on the flight bag or screen. The Mode S and Mode C target in this instance will not see you. So already, without the use of any pilot aware ground infrastructure, we can already detect 60% of the aircraft transmitting an electronic conspicuity signal in the UK. 60% wasn't enough for pilot aware supporters, and following a tragic mid-air collision between a glider and a light aircraft, they wanted to see FLAM equipped aircraft as well. So to do this, pilot aware uses a network of ground stations to detect glider locations transmitted on one frequency and rebroadcast their position to pilot aware users on the other. Now, all pilot aware equipped aircraft can detect all FLAM equipped aircraft when they're in range of one or more pilot aware atom grid ground stations. This has been very successful. So, with the help of the atom grid infrastructure, Pilot Aware can detect 85% of all aircraft transmitting an AC signal. But that was still not good enough for us. The real prize would be how to detect the 60% of aircraft that already have a MODIS transponder and present them as a target with a GPS location, just like ADSB. That was a real engineering challenge. But with the help of the Atom Grid ground station, it's now been done. How then do we now see all Mode S transmitting aircraft as a target with a GPS bearing when they have no GPS on board? The process is more fully documented on the Pilot Aware website, but in brief it goes like this. A Pilot Aware equipped aircraft detects a Mode S equipped aircraft as it did in Stage 1. The information received includes the aircraft's unique ICAO code. The ground station continuously uploads the latitude and longitude of all Mode S transponders detected in the vicinity. On the onboard computer on Pilot Aware, searches for an ICAO match and the GPS coordinate is then known. The multilateration data to make all this available is provided by 360 Radar Limited. So why are there so many systems? Why don't we have just one system? The reasons are basically down to history, functionality, capability and price. No one system will meet all the requirements of cost and the types of flying done. For example, Mode S and Mode C transponders were historically designed to provide air-to-ground conspicuity. Only recently has this been adopted by commercial traffic using very expensive and heavy TCAS systems. FLAM was first introduced to help glider pilots avoid collisions when flying very close to other gliders in thermals and in mountains. Glider pilots are very well trained and tend to fly in close formations that the average GA pilot would find frightening. Pilot Aware was developed as a low-cost device that would integrate all the systems together as far as possible and encourage voluntary equipage by GA pilots. 
The advanced functionalities provided by FLARM and Pilot Aware were not possible using the regulated frequency of 1090 MHz, so alternative frequencies and modulation techniques had to be used. So how does Pilot Aware and the Pilot Aware Atom Grid Network integrate the various systems together? This diagram shows the makeup of the Atom Grid Network. In the UK, but also in mainland Europe, Pilot Aware, with the help and cooperation of the power and gliding communities, has developed and installed 178 Atom Grid ground stations to help integrate all electronic conspicuity systems together. It is anticipated that 200 sites will be installed by the end of 2020 and 400 sites by the end of 2022. The ground network consists of the following elements. Firstly, there is the Atom ground station itself. These ground stations are installed at airfields, flying clubs, gliding clubs, colleges and private locations. Secondly, there is the encrypted ground network that connects all individual sites to the central Pilot Aware servers. Thirdly, there are the Pilot Aware servers that in turn are connected to other networks, such as the Open Glider Network, 360 Radar Limited, and other sources and destinations. The Atom Station contains the hardware and software which is the heart of the system. Each atom station is connected to three local antennas. Antenna 1 detects all in-range transmissions twice a second from aircraft transmitting their location using the FLAM system. These are mainly gliders, but FLAM is also popular amongst power pilots as well. This is a receive-only antenna. Antenna 2 detects all in-range aircraft transmissions on the aviation frequency of 1090 megahertz. These include mode C, mode S, and ADSB out transmissions. This is also a receive only antenna. Antenna 3 is a transmit and receive antenna that provides a two way data link between all in range pilot aware equipped aircraft. Antenna 1 will detect the latitude and longitude of all in-range FLAM signals. Their position is detected very accurately and the transmission is in line of sight at very near the speed of light, so there is no latency or delay. At the same time, Antenna 2 will detect all 1090 MHz signals transmitted. ADSB signals are transmitted autonomously every second or so. However, Mode C and Mode S transponders only transmit in response to an interrogation from a ground station. Antenna 3 is a transmit and receive antenna. This communicates in both directions with pilot aware equipment installed in in-range aircraft and drones. In this way, aircraft detected directly by the in-flight pilot aware units will be augmented by FLAM transmitting aircraft and mode S transponders using multilateration. The line of sight range of each atom station is about 60 kilometers, but this will be reduced by obscuration in the aircraft and local terrain. All aircraft collected is also transmitted over the internet to the pilot aware servers for distribution to other atom stations. There are many ways to implement the hardware for an atom grid ground station. This version uses a high gain 9 dB receive antenna for the FLAM reception, which gives the best performance available. An IP65 rated enclosure is also used to locate the electronics close to the antennas. This allows the antennas to be finely mounted at a high location with minimal loss in the coaxial feeders. Alternatively, the electronics can be mounted inside the control tower or clubhouse away from the weather and the antennas can be connected via low loss coaxial cable. 
This installation shows the electronics in an enclosure with a clear lid that gives good visibility to the various lights and indicators for diagnostics. Atom grid stations are being installed by patronage across the UK and Europe. This is being done by aviation clubs and individuals who are keen to improve electronic conspicuity at their sites and to contribute to the Atom Grid network for the benefit of aviation as a whole. 190 sites are either already installed or in the process of being installed as of June 2020. The network map shows an instantaneous screenshot of the low level traffic detected on the day that the COVID-19 lockdown was eased to allow solo flights in England and parts of Europe. The traffic shown will be benefiting from all the functionality of Pilot Aware if it's fitted in their aircraft. This includes the reception of FLAM and enhanced Mode S called Mode S 3D. The update of data to aircraft from all METAR stations within an 150 km radius is planned for availability from the Pilot Aware software release expected in 2020. We hope that this video has encouraged you to install an Atom Grid ground station at your site to help aviation safety in Europe. If you do install one, you will have the added advantage of being able to display a virtual radar screen or in fact several virtual radar screens in your clubhouse, tower or even remotely. On this configurable screen you will be able to see Pilot Aware, FLAM and ADSB aircraft in real time and MODIS aircraft with a few seconds delay. While this information cannot be used for air traffic control or management, it has proven to be an invaluable aid to local situation awareness by most folks who use it. Of course, the Atom Grid network is backed up by a secure network management suite that is used to upload new software at an instant and also manage the health of the network. That concludes this introductory video on the Pilot Aware Atom Grid Network. Please look out for future videos including how the Pilot Aware Atom Grid Network has been used to show the extent of obscuration caused by indirectly sighted electronic conspicuity and how the network can overcome this. Thanks for watching, thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to future videos.